Good morning, everybody. Amen. If we could all get to our seats, well, we'll stand uh, for the reading of the word, and we'll open up with prayer this morning. So good to see Joshua here this morning with his beautiful daughter. Yes. Yes. Thank God, Sam. Good to see you, too. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Amen. We'll be, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer first. Father, we love you this morning. We, in, we invite your presence in, God, this morning. Uh, oh, hallelujah. We thank you this morning. God, for your goodness, Lord. We thank you for your mercy, God, this morning. We thank you for the church of the living God. Hallelujah. Lord God, we give all the glory to your name. And we ask you, Lord, to help us, God, this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus, let the will of God be done. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you want to turn to the book of Hebrews, chapter 10. And we'll be reading verse 38 and 39. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 38 and 39. Now the just, somebody say the just, the just. He's making a specific example of, of, he's pointing somebody out. He's talking about the children of God is what he's talking about. Shall live by faith. I, I wish we could really get that really down in our spirit, you know. Uh, I know that we live by faith, but. But we, we, we literally live, everything we do is by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. The term uh, draw back means to, to let down, to lower, to be unwilling uh, to utter from fear, to shrink from declaring or to conceal or dissemble. But, so that's what the, the phrase draw back means. And so he said, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Somebody say, but we are not of them that draw back under perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord, let, let's pray one more time. Father, we love you. God, we give all the honor to your name, Lord. We give glory and honor to you, God. Lord, we seek your help and your strength today. God, we seek your anointing, God, this morning. Lord God, it's your anointing that destroys every yoke of bondage. Hallelujah. We call on the name of Jesus, and we believe, God, your word this morning. We ask you for your divine touch on this service in Jesus' name. Amen. Tell your neighbor, say, I am a believer. Amen. You can be seated. That is my title this morning. I am a believer. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you this morning. Just give me a moment here. I just want to, I just want to entertain the, the presence of God here this morning. Lord God, we thank you this morning. Lord, you're a mighty good God. You're, you're awesome. <laughs> yes, Holy Ghost, we love you this morning. We worship you this morning. We give you praise, God, this morning for every good thing you've done in our lives. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to believe to be believers, God. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us out of this world of darkness and granting us repentance under, under the acknowledging of the truth, O oh God. Father, we love you this morning. We give you glory this morning. Hallelujah. My God, it feels good to be a believer this morning. <laughs> it feels good to be a believer this morning. Hallelujah. I'm glad the Lord chose me. I'm glad the Lord called my name out of that crowd that I was running with. I'm glad the Lord looked down from heaven and saw a pitiful little soul and said, I'm going to make him a believer one day. I'm going to make her a believer one day. I know they're not right now, but I'm going to make them a believer. I'm glad the Lord sees us for what we can become and not who we are. Amen. I think we would do well to operate that way in the church as well. We can't look at people for who they are, but we have to see them for who they can become and who they are in Jesus Christ. If, if God looked at us for who we were, he would have dropped us off a long time ago. He'd have left us alone. He'd have threw us away. He'd have cast us off alone. But he never looks at us for who we are in the moment. He's always looking down the road and saying, this is who you're going to be. Hallelujah. This is who you're going to become. This is who you are. You're just not all the way there yet sometimes. But he's always looking at who you are. Amen. 
Thank God. Thank God. Hebrews 10 said that if any man draw back, he said that God would have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them. You see, you can be of two groups today of people. You can be of them who draw back, or you can be of them who believe. There's really only two groups. He said, we are not of them. You know, the folks that, that draw back, that don't want to live for God, or that don't want to believe and always live in fear and always live in, in, in sin. No, 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 no. He said, he said, we are not of them. That doesn't mean sometimes you don't fear or sometimes you don't sin or sometimes you don't stumble, but that's not who you are. That's not the crowd that you're running with. We're running with the crowd that believes today. Hallelujah. Oh, you might stumble around sometimes, but you're still in the right crowd if you're believing today. You're in the right crowd. Amen. We're not better than anybody else. We're just believers. We're just believers. I'm no better than the unbeliever. I just have a better position when it comes to eternity. I do. But I'm no better than them. I'm no, there's nothing inherently more valuable about me than there is about an unbeliever. Because I was an unbeliever. Now, what's interesting is those that claim to be believers in our day. You know, like I, t I talked about it at prayer meeting the other night. Taught a Bible study. And this woman said, you know, I, 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 I don't think I'm saved. She said, I was baptized many years ago in a river. She said, I do a lot of good works. But she said, I, I don't think I'm saved. She said, if God would come back right now, I, I don't think I'm saved. And I just wanted to shout all over that living room. Not because she acknowledged, not because she's lost, but because she acknowledges she's lost. And she doesn't want to stay there. She wants to do something about it. Hallelujah. She wants to be baptized. She wants to be filled with the Holy Ghost. She wants to be saved. Amen. And we got too many. It's very difficult to find anybody. I was telling Brother Nugent about that. He said, did you break out the tape recorder? <laughs> you should have recorded that because that doesn't happen very often. Guinness Book of World Records there. I got the one and only recording of a person who actually admitted they were lost. <laughs> Amen. Before you can ever become a believer, you've got to admit that you're not believing is what you've got to do. If you're, if you're believing always catapults you into the presence and the will of God is what it does. We live in an age where the believing means just kind of, you know, honk your horn and wave and shine your headlights and but, but that's not what believing is. Believing is, it's, it's action is what it is. Believing is, amen. So I believe to the saving of the soul. I believe to the fulfillment of promises. What are we believing to? I believe to the breaking through for victories because I am a believer. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. I'm believing to the fulfillment of my promises that God has given me. I'm believing to the victories that are going to come into my life. I don't draw back. If I'm not of the crowd that draws back, I'm not of that crowd. So when sacrifice comes, I don't draw back from sacrifice. I don't draw back from persecution. I don't draw back from challenges. John 15, verse 18 through 21, a very encouraging scripture from the Lord himself. If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. <laughs> if ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you are not of the world, but I, now this is encouraging, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. The world hates you. And if I'm a believer, I'm not going to draw back from that persecution. I'm just going to embrace it. I'm going to let them hate me. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not going to draw back from God because I'm hated by somebody. I'm not going to draw back from God because I'm persecuted. Because somebody hates me for living for God. Oh, and they hate it too. There's Oh, you want to see folks get really mad. You start talking about God. <laughs> oh, they get mad. I didn't realize the guys and, and the folks that I grew up with, we all grew up just kind of whatever church. None of us meant, it didn't mean nothing to any of us. You know, we were just a bunch of heathens, just kids, you know, doing our thing, trying to figure out life. And mom and daddy made us go to church on Sunday. 
you know, we didn't care nothing about God or church. We cared about everything that was going on in the flesh and what we wanted to do. That's what we were doing. So we never had conversations about God or church. And when I got in the church, I, you know, I'd go see my old buddies. All of a sudden, anger rose up in me. It wasn't fun anymore when I brought God into the picture. They weren't happy to see me. But you see, I didn't draw back from God because somebody didn't agree with me. I didn't draw back from God because somebody drew a line in the sand. You're either going to go that way or this way, but we're not going with you. And I said, I'm sorry we've been friends, almost like brothers for 25 years, but I've got to go now. I've got to go now. I'm sorry because I'm not going to draw back unto perdition, the Bible says. You see, drawing back only leads to sin and death and, and destruction. There's nothing. Here's the most, here's the most probably, I don't know, I don't want to say popular. Well thought of idea. If I give up now, then the trouble will stop. If I just walk out of these doors, my life will get better. If I quit praying, the devil's going to leave me alone. If I just act like everybody else, then everybody's going to like me. <laughs> it's the biggest lie. It's the biggest lie. They, the, the, the children of Israel always wanted to draw back instead of go to the promised land. But had they drawn back and went back, they would have died in their sins. It, they wouldn't have, there wouldn't have been no victory. And so I, we are not of them that draw back because I am a believer. We are believers. That's what you're anointed to do. That's what you're created to do. It is not in your DNA, your spiritual DNA, to draw back. So if I draw back, if you draw back, you are going against the very thing you were created to be. You're going against your own DNA. Because God did not design you. He didn't put one drop of drawback in your DNA when you got the Holy Ghost. He, you're full of victory. You're full of faith is what God deposits in you. You tell me you got the Holy Ghost. Uh, you didn't have one thought of giving up, turning now. You know, you get all up in your flesh and then you cry and whine and go through things. But when you got the Holy Ghost, you did, that ain't what came with it. <laughs> we all got the flesh we have to contend with. But when God fills you with the Holy Ghost, he doesn't put that in the package. There is no drawing back in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Are you a believer today? Are you a believer today? Remember the word that I said unto you in the rest of the scripture verse. I didn't read all of it. Remember the word that I said unto you. The servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. And so I don't, I don't draw back from for fear of persecution. I'm not going to draw back. You know, you know what also we don't draw back from? Oh, I know you, I know you do it, but you, you're not allowed to. I don't draw back from forgiving those who have done me wrong. If I, I'm talking about being a believer, being of them that believe to the what? Saving of the soul. You see where that's going? We believe to the saving of the soul, or we draw back unto perdition, which is death, destruction, just terror. It's terrible. But you see, Ephesians 4 and 32, he said, be ye kind one to another. Tender, isn't that wonderful? God just wants you to be kind. If you can't do anything else, just be kind. <laughs> if you're not real good at anything else, just be kind. It goes a long ways. In fact, I've met preachers and singers and mighty prayer warriors walk by you with their nose so stuck up in the air, wouldn't look at you, pay you any attention. Well, I don't have nothing for that. I promise you, that don't, that don't impress me. Their gifts don't. But then I've had people who just, 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 just in the church doing what they can, and they're some of the nicest people I've ever met in my life. I'm not downing preachers and, and gifted people, but... Uh -uh. Kindness goes a long ways. 
And if you're a believer today, we need to be kind to one another. Hallelujah. Tender hearted. Not hard hearted. Not cold hearted. Tender hearted. Forgiving one another. Even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. When God forgave us, he didn't do it for your sake. I know we think that. But that's not what the Bible says. We think he forgave us just because he loves us. Well, I know he loves us, but the Bible said he did it for Christ's sake, for the sake of that sacrifice that he made, <laughs> for the sake of the sacrifice he made, he forgave us. So why can't we forgive one another? Why don't we get Jesus involved sometimes? Lord, I, I don't like what they did to me, God, but for your sake, I'm going to forgive them. That's what that means. For your sake, for your sake. I'm going to forgive them because I can't do it for their sake. <laughs> you need to get Jesus involved. I'll never forget the, I don't know about the first real time, but, you know, I, you know after preaching forgiveness 20 years, and, you know, I've forgiven small stuff. Some stuff you don't even need to forgive. You just ignore it. It ain't nothing. It's just dumb. You know what I mean? I ain't felt no re real need. I didn't feel real betrayed because I knew that person's weakness. I knew they were going to talk about me. I knew they were going to lie on me. I knew they were whispering. That's that just a bunch of dumb junk. I don't even need to forgive them for that because I know they're dumb. I know they get tripped up in that. We all got junk. We get tripped up, and I know that's theirs. But the first real time I had to forgive somebody, I was like, oh. Okay, I guess I'm going to have to live this now. It wasn't easy. But for, this, for his sake, I had to forgive. And I did. And that relationship is as strong as it ever was before the offense or the incident. Because by the grace of God, I'm not bragging on me. Trust me, I had to pray about it. <laughs> I didn't just jump up and say, I forgive thee in the name of the Lord. And all offenses have been wiped out. It was more like, I feel like I got taken. I feel like he's getting over on me. I feel like I feel wrong. I feel cheated. I don't feel good about this. God said, I'm bigger than all that. You need to forgive him. God said, I'm bigger than all that. Forgive him. Hmm. Hallelujah. So I don't draw back from forgiving, but I believe. I'm a believer today. Therefore, I'm going to forgive people. I'm going to let them go. I'm not going to hold them accountable every time I see them. I'm not going to hold their feet to the fire and make sure they've repented 1,000% and they're treating me fully and absolutely perfectly right before I forgive them. That's not easy. But if I'm a believer, that's what I'm going to do. I don't draw back from giving of my time, my finances, and my labor because I am a believer. 1 Corinthians 15 and 58 Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always, <laughs> always. I wonder what the time, where is the, they got term limits on that? What, is, there, is there an end to this? Oh, what do you think? Anybody know what that means in the Hebrew or the Greek? Can we find that in the Greek and get a different definition? <laughs> my poor old buddy, he. I'll never forget the day he said it. He said, I paid my dues. I ain't stacking no chairs. And it went downhill from there. And he spun out for 10 years in all, every kind of the religion and just craziness and just, just spun out. And I had a dream. And I told him before he said, after he said that, he started taking vacations from church. And, you know, that's what he would call it. I'm just taking a vacation from church. And, uh, you know, all this. And I had a dream. He and I was in a truck. And we were driving. I looked at him in a dream. I said, brother, in all you're backing up, you're going to back up clean out of this church. <laughs> and so I told him the dream. I said, brother, and he just, he didn't, he wouldn't respond. He kept backing up. But I'm not saying he doesn't love God today. He made, a, he made a round back. He did, but he's still not quite who he was then. You know, he's gotten, he's carried a lot. He's picked up a lot of baggage since then he he's made his way back but he's carried or picked up a lot of baggage and so it's a dangerous thing to draw back you know i still stack chairs in this place i try to get y'all to do it as much as i can but we had that christmas thing i had to go haul chairs stack chairs 
if there's somebody else that can do it, fine. But I hadn't paid my dues yet, Brother Clark. You know, if it's me and I'm, they need my help, I'm going to do it. It doesn't matter how many years I've preached or how many years you've lived for God. If you're physically able, spiritually able, if you have an ability to do something, you need to go ahead and do it. I understand, folks. Well, I don't expect Brother Clark to lift up ten chairs and throw them in the back of a truck, jump in the back of the truck, and go across town. I don't expect that out of him. You know what I've always thought? It's not my responsibility to decide when my dues have been paid. It's other people's responsibility. Does that make sense? I'll never forget Brother Massey showed up at Living Way when he first became the pastor. And uh, he got out in that. We were doing landscaping, digging up old trees, putting in plants. He's out there on his hands and knees, scratching up dirt, pulling weeds. I walked over there. I said, look here now. I said, I don't ever want to see you do that again. I, that's what I'm here for. That's what I get paid $25 a week for. You go on and do what you got to do. <laughs> I didn't say that part. <laughs> I got paid 30 <laughs> But I said, look, I didn't, I, I didn't ever want to see that man pick up trash because I knew he was willing. We decided. He didn't decide his dues were paid, but we said, you know what? You don't need to do that. We see your willingness. We see that you know what I'm – and so I don't feel like it's my responsibility as a believer to decide when my dues are paid. I think that's a God thing. I think God will send people in your life to do things for you. And that's when God says, you paid your dues there. It's all right. <laughs> Amen. Thank God. I don't, I don't draw back from giving of. Does it, is it always convenient? Does it always feel good when I give of my time, my finances, and my energy? No, it don't. But I can't draw back from it because I'm a believer. I'm going to give when there needs to be given. I'm going to go when there needs to be going. And I'm going to do when there needs to be doing. It's just the way it is because I'm a believer. That's what we are. We are believers. Amen. He said, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. I heard Brother Nugent say it for years. He said, I could stop preaching today and just be, be totally fine. He said, but I'll never stop doing the work of God. And he, he, he gets in there. I can see him online sometimes. He's over there shaking hands. He can't do a lot physically, but he's in that congregation in Louisiana. He's shaking hands. He's talking to people. He'll walk up to him and say, now, I know who you are. I can't see you, but I know you're there. He's battling macular degeneration. He can see somewhat, but he's not letting that affect him. He's not saying, I'm going to sit in my corner because it's a little bit embarrassing for me to get up and, and mistake somebody for somebody else. He goes, oh, I thought you were so, so you know I'm blind. Come on over here. Just whatever. Just whatever. But you see, he's not going to draw back. He's 78 years old, and he can't do everything, but, but he gets out and he does what he can. Amen? Are you a believer today? Are you a believer? 1 Timothy 2.15, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. I don't draw back from studying the word. If you're a believer, whether you preach or not, you need to be in the word. You don't need to draw back from studying the word because you're not a preacher or because you don't have to teach a Bible study, but you need to get in this word. Brother Cyper and Brother Damien were talking about it before church, and he said every time you open this book, it's a living book. It comes alive, and something you saw before, now you see it a different way. So it may not apply to you today, but it will in just a little while. And they were talking about the word of God. I love that. I love to just get on somebody, to happen upon them, and hear them talking about the word of God. Their boy. Lord, we went out Wednesday night, took him out to eat after church. Man, we sat there for a solid hour. We didn't talk about nothing but scripture. I just, I had to remind myself, Grady, he's the guest. Shut up and listen. And I did. I did. I did. I promise. I let him talk. He, he talked just as much as I was willing to talk. Oh, yeah, let me tell you what the Lord showed me. Let me tell you what the Lord showed me. And we just went back and forth. But it was wonderful. Just talking about the word of sitting down with somebody who actually knows their Bible and reads their Bible and studies their Bible and gets a revelation from their Bible. It's a wonderful thing. You don't need to draw back from studying the word because you're not good at it. If there's anybody that's not good at it, you're looking at them. I don't like studying. 
I love the Word of God, but I don't like sitting down and just studying. That's not something I enjoy. Now, I enjoy doing it with the Word, but I still have to focus. You know how much energy it takes for me to sit down in one place and focus on one subject? And if God ain't there, it's not happening. The Holy Ghost helps me. When the, when the Holy Ghost is in it, it's fun. I can do it for two hours. But me, just waking up tomorrow morning, getting it out, and just in my flesh. Whew, that's a challenge. Because my flesh don't like studying like that. I'd rather get up and go do something. <laughs> I'd rather get up and go witness to somebody, pray for somebody, instead of just sit there and look at it and try to figure it out. But, but I love the Word of God, so it's, worth, it's worthy of my time. The Word of God is worthy of my time. It's worthy of my inconvenience. It's worthy of my sacrifice of my flesh. So you don't need to draw back from studying the Word because you're not a natural at it. Or because you don't understand the King James. Uh, the, the excuses people make, it's, it's unreal. I was sitting at a uh, table teaching a young man a Bible study, and I went to school with his sister. He was a little bit younger than I was. But uh, she was at the house, and this was years ago in Louisiana. But she, uh, she graduated at the top of her class. She was a year older than me. And uh, I, what do you call that when you're the valedictorian? Yeah, she was a valedictorian. She was smartest cat. She's a pharmacist today, making all kind of money. And I'm sitting there, Grady, who, my God, just, you know, I, I barely got through school here. You know. But I'm sitting there teaching this Bible study, and she walks through. I said, hey, Michelle, how you doing? Doing good, Grady, good to see you. I said, why don't you come join us? She said, well, I'm on my way to work right now. I said, well, yeah, okay, well, that's fine. I said, uh, well, maybe next week you sit down. We can, we can. You know, sit down and do a little bit of Bible study. She said, I just don't understand the Bible. I said, Michelle, you know, you didn't understand geometry in second grade either. But you sat down and you learned a little bit of math is what you did. I said, get started somewhere. If you look at the overall Bible and say, I'm just not going to understand it, then you're not going to get started anywhere. <laughs> you got to get started somewhere. Just start studying the Word. Amen. If you need help, we'll help you with it. Acts 23 and verse 12, I'm coming to it. I'm not long this morning because I just have one central message. We are not of them. That's not who we are. We don't draw back. We believe. We don't draw back from prayer. We don't draw back from worship. We don't draw back from the study of the word. We don't draw back from forgiving people. We don't draw back from loving people. We don't draw back from involvement in the body of Christ. We don't. That, that's not who we are. But we're believers is who we are. And so I want to encourage you today. If you find yourself drawing back, it's all right. Just get back on the right team. Get back in the right crowd be in the church and be in the midst of some drawing back folks. Hey, it didn't take me long as a new believer. The kids that were raised in the church, I was 24, they were like 18 and 19, and we had a blowout service. I'm talking people bouncing off the walls, man. I'm talking about wild stuff. People running around the building, shouting, dancing. I mean, people getting the Holy Ghost. And after church, we'd go sit down and eat. I said, man, did y'all catch that game the other day? What? Where were you the last two hours? They didn't want nothing to do with what just happened because they had been drawn. Oh, they were there because they knew they were supposed to be there. But they had been drawn back a long time. Is what they, they had no interest in people getting the Holy Ghost, people shouting and dancing and worshiping, the anointed mess. They didn't care nothing about it. I'm like, I'm not running with this crowd. <laughs> I know they're in the church, but I'm not running with them. Because I'm not of them that draw back. I am of them that believe. Hallelujah. Why don't you praise the Lord for just a minute. Oh, hallelujah. We love you, Lord. We worship you, God. We give you glory today, God. What a mighty God you are. In Jesus' name. We don't draw back. Oh, now every one of you is going to disagree with this. We don't draw back from fasting. We all draw back from that. Our flesh just, mm, you know, but there's still a call to fast. There's still a call to do without. 
there's still a call to crucify the flesh. Acts 23 and 12, let's, let's look at what the unbelievers, how committed they were. And when it was day, certain of the Jews banded together and bound themselves under a curse. This is serious business. Saying that they would neither eat nor drink till they had killed Paul. Now, I am certain they believed he was going to be dead within a 24-hour period. I wonder if they ever broke that little uh, oath they had. <laughs> but here's the deal. They were so willing to see their will done. They were so bent on destruction until they were willing to go without food and water until it got done. And God spoke to me one time. He said, what are you willing to do without until you see something good? What are you willing? He said, hey, come on, somebody. Hey, come on. Hallelujah. I'm talking about being committed to some fasting and committed to doing without some things until we see something happen. That's how committed they were. Unbelievers. Bent on evil. Amen. And so we don't draw back from radical commitments is what we don't do if you're a believer. Oh, trust me, I know how comfortable we can get as believers. We have our little schedules. We have our little things. I understand all that. But God's always trying to get us to break out of that. It don't have to be always wild and crazy. But just get, just break out of our little, our little schedules and our little daily routines. And just, just don't get stuck in a rut. But let me tell you, as believers, there, there are going to be some radical commitments that God is going to make have us make. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. I, I, I think it's a radical commitment to leave your entire family and travel to a foreign country and be a missionary. It's radical. I don't think that's probably what he was praying about when he was in eighth grade. Or maybe if the calling was there, I don't know. I, I don't think that was on their son's plan. Which one is this? Not, what's his name? That's Aaron. Okay. I don't think it was on his, you know, radar for his life. But God said, this is what I've got for you. And he didn't draw back from it. His family didn't draw back from, from it. Had to let go. Had to let go. They had to accept the commitment. Amen. Matthew 16, 24 and 25. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself. And take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. We don't, we are not of them that draw back. But we are of them that believe. We don't draw back from following Jesus even when it gets difficult. We don't draw back from Jesus even from following him even when we don't agree with him. You ever disagree with Jesus? I'm not talking about fighting with him, but I'm like, oh, that was the devil told me that. Ain't no way that was God. That's my imagination. I hear things all the time. That's just one of them. You know one of the best ways to know you've heard the voice of God? Be like Moses. Who? What? Shock. That's a good way to know you've heard the voice of God. <laughs> what? You want me to do what? You want me to go where? Oh, I can't do that. That's a good way of knowing. Good way of knowing it was probably God. Because the devil, he, no, it ain't going to be like that. Amen. I'm coming to a close, but he, 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 I know this isn't real emotional today, but it's not about being emotional. Because, look, when you're believing, it has nothing to do with emotion. It's putting one foot in front of the other. In fact, there, the, the times that I have believed the most God was non-existent in my universe. I couldn't feel him. I couldn't see him. I couldn't hear him. All I knew is what he had told me to do before, and that was all I knew. I didn't have no powerful move of God, powerful anointing, but as soon as I began to believe, all of a sudden, all that showed up. <laughs> all that showed up. It all showed up. So believing is not about emotion. It's about making up in your mind. It's about making a decision. Now, we're very emotional as Pentecostals. I love it. I'm an emotional person. But at the end of the day, when all that goes away, you, you still have to believe. You have to make a decision. 
this is what I, I'm going to follow Jesus even if it costs me everything. I'm going to follow Jesus even if my mama don't like it, my daddy don't like it, my kids don't like it, my spouse don't like it, my girlfriend, my boyfriend, my teacher, my job, my boss. It doesn't matter at the end of the day because they can't save me anyway. Jesus is the only one that I can that can save me. He's the only one worth following. Let me tell you, it does hurt to follow Jesus sometimes. Because not everybody else wants to get on the journey. There's a lot of folks that are of them that draw back. They draw back and say, no, I'm not walking that path. I, I'm not willing to. I don't, I don't like the cost of it. There's just all kind of reasons. I'm not ready to. There's all kind of reasons. But I'm not of them. I'm of them that believe. <laughs> Hallelujah. Aren't you glad to be a believer today? Aren't you glad to be? Let's all stand in the house of God. Thank you, Lord. We love you this morning. God, we thank you, Lord, that we're believers today, that we are not of them that draw back under perdition, but we are of them that believe to the saving of the soul, God. We will not draw back from sacrifice or challenge. We will not draw back from following you, Jesus. We will not draw back from forgiving people and from helping people, loving people, and being involved in the work of your kingdom. We will be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank God. Well, I am honored to be in the midst of a lot of believers today. Thank God for believers. You know what believers do? They believe. God bless you. We're dismissed in Jesus' name.